Now I know all of you are waiting for another Ferrari update, but I like to think of myself as more than a one-trick pony. And quite simply, the work-life balance can't always tip in the favor of fun. Or can it? How about we have fun while doing work? So I've got this nice little pocket right here that I am going to attempt to build a winch-based tire elevator. Jumping right in, because that's just the way I roll, my elevator is going to be 16 feet tall by 3 feet wide. And I'm going to use this existing structural beam to anchor it to. Looking from the side, I'm just going to create a little carriage or sled, three feet squared. That's going to go up and down. Pretty simple, right? Now, this isn't meant to be an educational video. I mean, if you get something out of it, that's fantastic. But this is more about the journey. And as always, you are welcome along for the ride. So we're going to start off with the A-frame, the structural backbone. I am most certainly not an engineer. I think I'm pretty handy, but I default to overbuilding things. And I've learned that one of the greatest skills is to measure things three times before I cut them. And I know to test things before I pick them up in case they're hot. Why, yes, I have learned that the hard way. On the bright side, I'd probably be a great thief because I wouldn't leave fingerprints anymore because I've removed all my skin. I've made this A-frame out of 2x2 two by, two by 1 8 wall square tubing. And I'm going to use a combination of MIG welding and TIG welding today. Well, that was the easy part. And now I'm going to set this A-frame aside while I work on my carriage. Made out of 1 and a quarter square tubing. The old bandsaw behind me. That bandsaw is very versatile, but unfortunately it's kind of wobbly now the guide is not much it hasn't doesn't have much use anymore and that chop saw is also very old and angry 3d printed 45 degree angle piece works very good for drawing uh, scribing lines carrying on with my tradition of making the tools I need is this simple angle iron square that I made a couple years ago it's really accurate and allows me to clamp all my material to the square. Behind me we have the carriage assembly that's going to slide up and down. Now I have to take these pieces here and I'm going to create a platform the tires can sit on. So far so good. Over there, that's the actual backbone of the system that we're going to put up later. I'm going to move that over onto the table in a bit. Now, of course, this unit doesn't have any safeties on it. For Pete's sake, it's like 75 years old. I don't think they had them back there. But notice how my hands are nowhere near the blades. All right, so I got these wheels, these casters off. Uh, Amazon. They are a heavy duty two inch caster. Right here, I'm just going to disassemble them and use these wheels. They're supposed to be rated at about 700 pounds uh, each, so they should be able to do the job, no problems. And I've gone upstairs to design the bracketry that I need to be able to mount them to the carriage. This is a program called Fusion 360. And the people at Fusion 360 are forward thinking enough to know that hobbyists like me may eventually turn into a customer. Which means they have a version of this program which is free for the hobbyist and non-commercial users. Way to go guys! Now this is a fully functioning manufacturing program and it can be a little intense. Now the dotted lines represent guidelines and those circles, well they represent my caster wheels that I'm using. 
This is version one of my wheel mounting system. I don't expect it to be correct, but I want to get to the point where I have a piece in my hand and I can check actual clearances. The previous screen was the design environment. Now I'm in the manufacture environment. Right now I'm simulating the tool path that my plasma cutter head will take. All right, so this is my first attempt. I just used some thin metal because I knew it wasn't going to be my permanent piece. And just looking at my design and figuring out whatever else I've got to uh, put here. Um, going to put a second wheel here because all the load is going to be right there on that spot right there. So I'm just going to kind of make the bracket come down here and make a more encompassing girthy piece there. Uh, down on this end, the load will be on this wheel, but up at the top end, the load's going to be on that wheel because the unit's going to be trying to turn out like this. So, got to go back to redesign. The center hole is my desired position, but I've created a slot so that I can move the wheel back and forth, I can adjust it, and if I need to service it, I can back it away, get the wheels out without having to take the whole carriage back down. As previously indicated, I'm adding my second wheel now. Wow, what the heck happened there? That got complicated real quick. You know, just as a side note, I'd like to discuss something else. A lot of people ask me how do they get into making stuff? They look at a diagram like this and say, wow, that's way over my head. Well, guess what? I don't actually have any formal training other than being a mechanic which certainly does not qualify me to do this. If you have any interest in getting into this whatsoever, you need to start off with a 3D printer, in my humble opinion. This is my second 3D printer. It's made by Flashforge. It's about five or 600 bucks. You can't go wrong. And while you may have to start off printing princesses because you only carry the X chromosome and you never had a boy to make like trucks and stuff, eventually, you'll get to bigger projects. Now back to our regular program. This is my design for the upper wheel mounting brackets and all the extra pieces there are just support so I can kind of close the wheels in. You'll see it in a second. Now, just in case you haven't seen my previous videos on this table, this is a Langmuir Systems Personal Plasma CNC table. And I love this thing. Well, looky there. That kind of looks like that diagram, doesn't it? Okay, so this is bracket number one. I'm just piecing it all together. There are my wheels. I'm going to tack weld it all up and uh, pull the uh, wheels out so they don't overheat the wheels. Just using them there and just kind of hold it all together. It's holding together without the wheels, but just adds a little bit more squareness when the wheels are in. All right, so making progress here. That is the top mount. Um, I have the other top mount, the opposite side, which is going to go down here. And then I'm going to tie these two together, lower, lower, just giving them a quick uh, grind. We are getting close. I'm finally mounting the winch and running the cabling. I've been on and off this for about 10 days, uh, working on it whenever I had a moment, but I'm at that point now where I just want to get it done and get back onto my Ferrari. Okay, so I've got the winch mounted and we're not gonna grab the winch straight like that. It has to go through a cinch block in order to multiply the force right there so it would theoretically come down 
loop back up and come up over, over to here. Because I had to mount this off to the side, <laughs> once it's up against the pole, you'll see that the um, mounting of this couldn't be in the center, which is what I wanted it to be, because I need the pole as support. That means I'm going to come down here, I'm going to weld on a bracket right there, and then I'm going to measure over here and weld on a corresponding bracket over there. Then I'm going to come up over here and weld another bracket over there. So theoretically the, the, the cable, the steel cable is going to go here, it's going to go down there through two, two cinch blocks and go up over there. That way it should pull evenly. Anyways, that's the goal. Keep going on it. And now for the moment of truth, let's give this thing a test. Well, looky there, it actually works. Now it's time to actually get it into place, which turned out to be a much harder task than I originally thought it was gonna be. Now I know what you're thinking. I have a forklift, why do I need an elevator? Well, that answer is easy. This tow motor slash forklift, well, it's pretty much at the end of its life. If a forklift were truly the answer for getting these tires up and down, I would be better served in getting rid of this one and purchasing a newer one. Especially since every time we need it, it's blocked by the car on that hoist and we end up hand bombing the tires anyways. All right, so getting that up was a lot tougher than I thought it was gonna be, but it's up. I've got a safety chain at the top, I've got a clamp at the top. So we're just gonna send this down right now and see if it works. And with that, I'm coming to an end. I've just gotta tidy things up and I've gotta put some safety features in it. I've anchored it into the concrete, I've welded it at the top, I've also chained it at the top, and I've ordered these fall arresters just to put an extra layer of safety in this thing, just in case something goes wrong. And guess what? If you've made it this far, you're my frickin' hero. Thanks for watching.